Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying Khan and your lunch and your drinks and your wine and your beer, whatever you're having. Um, welcome to Dentsu Beach House. Um, today's uh, afternoon session starts with Growth Through Good, How Sustainable Business Practices Drive Growth. And you know, it's really important to really understand the context behind this. And again, we have great panelists today who will provide you with a lot of clues, hints to actually provide solutions to our clients and really solve their business challenges around sustainability. So with that, uh, I would like to invite the three panelists to the stage. Uh, firstly, I would like to invite uh, Manabi Sato-san from Nikkei. So Manabi-san is from the Nikkei uh, newspaper. So Nikkei, Nikkei is the largest uh, economic newspaper in Japan. And in fact, she's the core member of the Nikkei Wellbeing Index. It has been shortlisted actually for nine times already. And she has already won the Silver Lion on PR. Congratulations, Sato-san. And I think we are expecting more to come, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, good, good. And so um, next person is uh, Naoshi Takatsan. Please, please welcome Naoshi to the stage. So he's the managing director of North Asia IMD. IMD, of course, you know, is a Swiss business school. And we are about to enter a good partnership uh, uh, with IMD. So we kind of invited him during his you know, very busy schedule. He's, he's flying over to Rosanne tomorrow. He's only staying here for one day. Sorry for him very much. <laughs> but I hope you will enjoy the last day in Khan today. Now, Sam. And last but not least, my colleague, Jean Lin. So the chief culture officer of our dental group, and also to this year's SDG jury president. How is <laughs> your judging so far? I'm on non-disclosure, so my lips are sealed. But you will be disclosing a lot of like hints and tips and clues for this audience today, right? <laughs> Not the result, but how we do business around sustainability, right? Um, Jean and I have been working together, especially Jean, it was uh, at the heart and the centerpiece of really developing our new um, integrated solutions around sustainability called Dentsu Good. And I think, you know, we are launching it this in US, Japan, and in other markets as well. She might touch upon that later on. So again, with that, I will hand it over to you, Jean. Thank you. Well, this is one of the most exciting moment for, for me this week. After judging two days in a dark room for almost 24 hours, looking over all the SDG line entries. And I, I want to just call out one person in the audience, Rob Skinner, who is the representative from United Nations. And Rob is also part of our jury members for SDG. They said this is the hardest uh, category to judge because the, the composition of the jury members come from agencies, come from people working in sustainability, come from solar energy, and also we have an expert in SDG, Rob, in the room, always reminding us why we have SDGs, but it's a really rich learning journey for me. So um, I'm, I'll be here moderating and facilitating the conversation today, but I think what I want to say is that Sustainability is a new digital, and it's probably the most important innovation opportunity for the world, for the enterprise, and for government. And it will be shame on us if we didn't embrace this opportunity to innovate for a better world. And that's part of the reason why, as Marcel san just said, that then to launch, then to good as a sustainability accelerator to help our client putting sustainability at the heart of their business strategy and march the journey forward without just looking at it as a communication effort. So it's, it's uh, with great honor that I have the two panelists with me today in discussing some of the interesting things that we're planning for and the learning that we have, because this is like really a humble journey that all of us are really learning. So I will actually pose the first question to Nachi-san, because 
you can see the resemblance of digital transformation and sustainability transformation if you look back 20 years ago when digital first started. This is where sustainability actually is placed today in how the industry moving forward. What, what do you see as the similarity and differences for um, between sustainability transformation and digital transformation? Well, thank you very much, Jim, for a very important question. And uh, good, good evening. Not exactly good evening. Good, good afternoon to you all. I, I'm still uh, living in the Jap Japanese time zone. Um, anyway, so digital transformation and sustainability, these are very, very important words that we should really, really, you know, like, uh, take attention. Uh, but the thing is that the relationship between the two are pretty complex, right? For example, when you pursue digital transformation, which is very much about efficiency, but sometimes it requires a lot of computing power, right? And depending on how you source the electricity, then it could be actually harmful for the environment or sustainability. And also, we have also seen that digitalization has um, created some kind of, you know, like uh, division of wealth um, to the, uh, you know, large giant companies and some individuals versus the rest of the world. So how could we ensure that the digitalization and sustainability work together for a more inclusive and sustainable world? That is a very, very important challenge for us. At the same time, though, you know, like we think that digital could be a great enabler for pursuing sustainability. Let's look at one of the examples from the agricultural industry, which we all believe that is kind of far from digitalization. But in fact, some companies have started to kind of digitally manage um, you know, like the um, forecast of the weather and the, you know, amount of fertilization, uh, the quality of soil and the access to the market, etc., 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 so that you have a better harvest and also better wealth to the farmers. And this is kind of, you know, like digitalization serving the purpose of sustainability. And, and I think we, we want to see more of that. Fabulous. I think the connectivity of almost sustainability cuts through everything that we do, and that's a rest threat for us in driving the future of any company. It's truly important. And I, I also feel that sustainability is one of the most global but also local issues, right? Because we, all the problems we have are global problems. But all the solutions that we have to come together are all local, and therefore the understanding of the local context and local system is really, really important. I want to direct this question to Manabi-san because Nikkei, as the most respectable media in Japan, you have, you know, you're not just our client, you're our partners in approaching a lot of these issues. But I want to ask you, how did you see the Japanese society reacting to this rapid change? Thank you so much for the question. But before I jump into the ans answering to the question, I want to say thank you so much for having me. It's such a privilege to be here. So now I'm answering to the question. And so Japanese, many Japanese people are moving forward to more collaborations from total competition to make a larger to make a larger positive impact on society in this sustainable in the age of sustainability. So Japanese companies are traditionally able to do everything by themselves, but because things are changing so rapidly these days, so we need to collaborate with others and share the knowledge and the good practices to scale the impact and also to make use of um, the each company's strengths even more. Yeah, I, I think this um, mindset shift from competition to collaboration is probably one of the major changes that companies, governments, and individuals need to embrace in our life in the next decades. Um, so I, I feel that obviously we talk about buzzword, right? Sustainability recently is a buzzword, but what we're really interested in doing is to make it real and really put into actions. And, and, and I think that that's the reason why we, we believe a lot in our role as Sentu in how we use our creativity and innovation to help our client to incubate, accelerate, and integrate sustainability and sustainability initiative into their business model. Um, I, I want to uh, uh, direct the first question to Naoshi san because the, the way you work with so many organizations, 
Um, how do you see the role of agency in this space? How can we contribute to make the world better? Well, the role of uh, agency on this pursuit for sustainability is just immense, really immense. But before talking about that, let me uh, refer a little bit to the role of academic institutions like ourselves, right? Um, IMD's purpose, uh, if I may say, is inspiring, uh, challenging what is and inspiring what could be. We develop leaders who transform organizations and contribute to society. And this is exactly what we're facing. We really have to ch challenge the status quo and we have to inspire the future that could be, right? And we do that by working with many, many senior executives from around the world, and we do a lot of researches. Um, you know, we have um, you know, substantial researches based on data, on interviews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can certainly create uh, some models uh, that would uh, resonate with the intellect of the individuals or individual leaders and organizations. But when it comes to actual social implementation of these ideas, you know, having executives uh, inspired doesn't do the job. It is an important part, but you really have to inspire the public. You really have to inspire the consumers and the suppliers and everybody else, because, because sustainability at the end of the day, it is everybody's game. It is not just because you change your mind, it happens. You really have to ensure that everybody is bored, right? And agency like Dentsu, who have been so good at inspiring people's emotion, talk to the heart of the people, to create behavior change in, you know, consumption or in lifestyle, etc., couldn't play, you know, more important role in this, this, this pursuit for sustainable society. So that's, that's what we hope to do together. Yeah, I, I think the, this um, always led to purpose and always purpose-driven is the only way to make sure that any change we want to instill to the world and the impact that we make can be truly sustainable. And I, we're always also very inspired by Nikkei's purpose of better insights, better world. And I think that's the reason why sustainability has been a core part of the passions for Nikkei. Could you tell us more about that, about your motivation and what you found and how you get here? So in the first place, Wellbeing Initiative is a business consortium of corporations with academia, the national government organizations, and it's co-hosted by Denzu and Nikkei. And we seriously aim to set well-being as a post-SDGs global agenda through this initiative. And if you look around the world, and now you can see that well-being is an increasingly relevant concept to the business world. And for us, in 1950, Nikkei started the Japan's most prominent stock index, Nikkei 225, which it has been calculating and publishing to this day. And that's the key driver for Japan's growth. So we have a history and a competence. And with the introduction of Wellbeing Index, which is the new idea, the new variable of growth that can stand next to GDP, and Nikkei is again showing Japan the way forward in this, in this age of change towards sustainable business transformation. And also we witnessed that many Japanese companies are having difficulties with how to measure especially non-financial aspects of their businesses, such as employee engagement. And so it was a strong demand from companies to measure and then track the ones subject to well-being for their employees and for their customers and for their business services. So together with the shift towards collaboration that I, should, I mentioned earlier, Nikkei Wellbeing Index, the initiative, came to life. I think this um, Wellbeing Index is a really powerful initiative and it takes a long time to develop and to really create that consortium coming on board. But that's the only way we can create change is not to set the competitive barrier in the way we do it. And that's the reason I think a platform like Nikkei is extremely critical in creating that neutral playground for everybody to contribute. And I think then to really need to thank Nikkei because of the well-being index idea when we need to support Nikkei in making this real to the Japanese market. 
it's really critical that we have a simple framework that can facilitate those co-creation process and the conversation so that we can accumulate and drive actions and symbolic actions for the, the, the companies really coming to joining Nikkei's Wellbeing Index Initiative and work on the initiative. That, that's the reason we developed a product called Canopy. So Canopy is uh, the invention, actually, I think a lot of people invented this, um, this product is sitting somewhere in this beach house. And it's a passion and co-creation for many people from Dentsu in Japan as a starting point. Um, Canopy is a collaborative um, sustainability development program. What we aim to do is to get the clients and business to look at not just the growth, the performance of business performance of the company that we typically being measured, but also look at environment, society, employees, and what measures and what non-financial indicators we have to create to link and really bring the purpose of the company to life. So, so we, we did a lot of those um, conversation with uh, I think over 30 companies that's joining the Nikkei Wellbeing Index using this methodology to help every client to find something that's critical to their core business. But they can actually join force and look at all the different components and how that will make their purpose come to life. So we're not trying to reinvent anyone's purposes. But with this diagram, what we try to do is to analyze all the different areas co-creating with client with creativity, innovation, and different input. So I, I think that this is something that we, we really are grateful for the partnership with Nikkei, because without that partnership and without the, the need for well-being index, we wouldn't really create this platform and have those in, in, in massive, massive opportunity engaging with so many world-known um, international and Japan organization, and we learned a lot from that. We really want to democratize this platform to ensure that more people can think this way, and therefore we can create a journey together. And this is speak to Dentu's, um, I think, our mission and our, our vision to deliver people-centered transformation that shapes society. We want to do something together with the industry to shape the society. So taking Canopy as an example, Naoshi-san, how, how, I mean, you're the research expert, so yeah. how do you see research will inform and evolve a, a, a framework like Canopy? Well, uh, there are um, uh, many, many different possibilities that we are currently exploring. But first of all, I would like to congratulate Dentsu and Dentsu team for creating this concept of Canopy because it's so integrated. I think it's so important and it speaks to the, 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 the spirit of the time. And also, it effectively leverages uh, Dentsu's uh, historic and also future capabilities. So, congratulations on that. Um, a school, uh, an institution like IMD, which focuses on uh, business researches and also business education, could contribute to something like Canopy from two different uh, angles, I think. One is on research. And when I say research, um, the, the core of the research that we will be working on with Dentsu would be around how to integrate sustainability really at the core of the strategy, right? And that is a, a challenging thing. One way to look at you know, sustainability is to change the consumer's behavior, like you know, we ask them to buy sustainable product. Another way would be to like, you know, like asking the, the, the consumers to take part in the sustainability creation with you. But the last one probably is like completely revisiting your strategy so that everything comes as a natural sort of, uh, how to say, behavior of everybody else. And that's what we would like to go for. So we would conduct you know, researches with you. Uh, we would conduct research with our clients. We would share the, the outcomes and all that. And I'm sure that the, 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 the outcome of such research would feed into the uh, canopy you know, steps, uh, for example, of the inspiration phase. And also, you know, like as an executive education uh, uh, school, we have a lot of opportunity to create an uh, environment where, for example, I have another one. I have this one in next week in Lausanne, and that's why I'm here. But uh, we're going to have like 450 executives uh, from 50 different countries gather together for five days 
to learn together. Some you know, plenary sessions, but also selective sessions on sustainability, leadership, digital, etc. right? And that could be a very interesting opportunity for Dentsu and its clients under Canopy to kind of get inspiration from everywhere in the world to inspire themselves. So uh, very, very interesting you know, opportunities for collaboration. Thank you. Right, we were really looking forward to this joint research that we're going to do together with IMD, which we think will be able to help our clients to rethink their sustainability practice and make things real. Um, and because Manavi San, Nikkei is sort of our first users of Canopy, uh, because you're jointly actually inspiring us in these processes. So if you think back on this journey, how, how do you think Canopy support and help the, to make the well-being index real? What, what's Dentu's contribution in this that you think is critically important and that also informs the role of the agencies? Nikkei's purpose drove this symbolic action and then Dentsu's canopy surely helps to bring it to life. So and we have a video that can show why the Nikkei Wellbeing Index was created. So maybe we can watch it and then see. That let's watch the wellbeing index video. The well-being index tracks a spectrum of well-being indicators with thousands of Japanese citizens and aggregates them into a single metric called GDW, Gross Domestic Well-being. The well-being index was published by the Nikkei newspaper, read weekly by over 6 million business leaders. Various top companies launched well-being initiatives, and the index was constituted by the Japanese government, who invested 8 billion yen. I think every time I see the video, and this is of course a cut down version, there is a long version, I'm never tired of watching it because it's so good and it just feels so meaningful for the contribution progress we can make when we find the right partners. So while a lot of the Japanese organizations adopting Canopy in this process, what, what do you see the positive change that it has created? So I believe there are a lot of possibilities for Canopy, but one thing for sure is that by using Canopy, our member companies are able to organize strengths and weakness, especially regard to non-financial aspects of their own initiatives. So the Canopy can be the material and it can be the help to systematically consider the next step for each company to take next action that can enhance uh, well, uh, well-being and also increase, I mean, improve the well-being index. Yeah, and I think one of the key things there is that because the, the right people are in the workshop, because the, this is a workshop aiming at senior executive, mostly CEOs and their, all of their functional leads that create meaningful solutions and idea that we can really keep actions and moving that forward. And that I think that's a part that we learn so much from just conducting those innovation workshop with all of the people that are involved in this well-being index. But, but I think um, one key thing, obviously, that um, uh, now, Shisan, you, you, you um, mentioned is that sustainability need to be powered by data and technology, right? While it doesn't always have to be a tech-driven solution, data is critical in this. So, so one of the questions that I want to add is what you've mentioned about the joint research that we're doing. And I think we value this partnership because partnership is about leveraging each other's strengths. And Dentsu's strengths is in creativity and innovation. And IMD's strengths is in research, development, and the credibility in e executive um, um, communication and, and, and education. Why would IMD partner with Dentsu? What, what did you see in Dentsu apart from our obvious strengths that you want to uh, strike this partnership? Um, that's a very important question. Uh, that's a very uh, inspiring question. Uh, who else would be my, my answer? But you know, let's think about it. Um, Dentsu 
is a global communication uh, agency. Uh, historically very, very strong in advertisement, but all sorts of communication. And Dentsu is very much interested in moving from that space to more integrated strategic business partner for their clients and to contribute to the society, right? You, you call it B2, B2S. So that kind of you know, values and directions that Dentsu is, is going toward uh, really resonate with, with IMD, whose purpose I have already discussed. Um, another thing is that when you look at the world of business academia, we were currently questioning that probably there are like many, many researchers, but most of them are from Western countries, um, more pre predominantly from America, right? And uh, we would need a lot more researchers from Japan and the rest of Asian countries, because, you know, like historically, we have had a different way of thinking, uh, cultural and uh, philosophical differences. And by working very closely with Dentsu, you know, we can not only work with the global players in the market, but also very, you know, deeply with the Japanese, uh, you know, market players. And then I think there will be a tremendous learning from working with the Japanese corporations and to somehow distill some of the key lessons from them and spread that to the world and then you know, get some reactions and back to Japan and all that. This kind of global you know, communication exchanging, leveraging the Japanese heritage of Dentsu would be a very, very interesting part uh, for a Swiss-based business school like IMD. Right, I think when East meets West and when the long-term view and short-term effectiveness come together is where we can really deliver growth through good. So it's really important where we're going to uh, explain more about this joint initiative when we are ready, but we just want to put a signpost here that it's coming and this is part of our continuous commitment as Dentsu to drive for more sustainable business solutions and help our clients. Um, so I think to conclude, what, what I want to do is to ask each one of you to say some final landing thoughts that you want the audience to take with you in your journey in driving for sustainability and sustainable growth. Why don't you start, Manabi-san? Sure. Um, as a media company, uh, Nikkei keeps a neutral standpoint. So the companies, other companies, and the government, and the, all the researchers and the academia, um, they have high expectation for our ability to communicate in information and also the, put the, bring to the social impact. And they're also hoping that um, collaborating with Nikkei will lead to a major social movement. So um, these expectations have driven our initiative and uh, we will focus more on its role of this position. And then uh, we want to welcome all the, uh, all the other companies to join us during this journey because as he said, West meets East, East meets West definitely bring a lot of like diversities so they'll be definitely refined and then we can establish the index even better. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now Shisan. Well, needless to say that the sustainability challenge is everybody's challenge, right? If, if this planet goes wrong, there is no, no, no other way for us to go, right? So it is everybody's business. At the same time, nobody can do this alone, right? No organization, no individual can do this alone. So it requires a lot of collaboration, a lot of speaking, a lot of communication, a lot of understanding and all that. And precisely related to this, uh, you know, like our collaboration, one, integrated whole approach, like, you know, canopy, is, is, would be very, very important. It also should be based on solid research, substantiated by global data. And when I say global, it is really global, right? And. Um, and then application to the practice, and then getting feedback from the practice, and to improve the model again and again. So this whole iteration of these steps would be something that we really have to work on until we absolutely nail it, right? So I hope that you would all join us on, on, on this uh, very important journey. Thank you. And, and it's um, really linked to the purpose of Dentu 
what we said is we are an invitation to the never before. So this is an open invitation for everyone because we're solving a very difficult and challenging, but also promising global challenges together and want to invite everyone to co-create the social value with us. And this is our game to lose and our game to win. So thank you for the panelists. And you know, it's, it's really, uh, really good to have this conversation together. I, I don't know if open to the floor, I was prompted that um, whether anyone has any questions from the floor that we have the two panelists that can answer. Hi, Jean. It's Kate, Kate Wills. Um, Kate. I've had the privilege of working with Dentsu for a number of years with the incredible malaria campaign who are sitting over there. Um, I stand before you, though, with a new challenge, which is um, we've launched a new global alliance for renewable energy, trying to get green energy across the world as fast as possible. Um, I'm absolutely bowled over by this initiative that you've formed and I'm really interested to know more about how you're integrating sustainable energy sources into the work um, and how it, I guess, can grow to sort of fit in the other pieces of the challenge that we'll need to look at as we, as we all take up this challenge. Well, thank you. So such a pleasure to, to see you, Kate, here. Uh, Clay is one of our favorite clients that actually drive a lot of actions on the world's most <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Um, I think the, the comment that Kate made probably is not a question we can answer here. But I think the intent is we will continue to create the ecosystem to link academic, government, media, and all the innovators together to make that a reality. We have our commitment. Definitely. Any other questions? Thank you all. That was really great and really interesting. I'd love to know, on you know, with the well-being index, as you've started to share this data, are you seeing companies really own the challenge? You know that they really need to drive this forward. And how do we encourage more companies to start driving this forward and being part of this? Thank you for the question. So member companies are really, really unhappy about this index and then happy to join the journey to create this index. So actually, our members' companies try to say other companies to join us by saying this positive impact of the index. And also, as a media outlet, we continuously disseminate information and concepts and ideas of this index. And then a lot of companies are now really interested in this idea. So they contact us, and we have meetings, and then they decide to come join us. So we want to expand the thing, to scale it to the world outside of Japan. If I may add, you know, like I, I, I believe this uh, Nikkei Wellbeing uh, Index is a, is, is a very, very bold and important initiative uh, which should not be limited to the Japanese territory. That, you know, this should be tested and experimented in Japan, but also, you know, eventually it should be a standard uh, across the world. Um, can I expect that from you? Sure, definitely. <laughs> Good. When you make a GDW a common platform in measuring success, across the world. When we can make that happen, half of the job is done. Great, so I think this is a good set way to probably end today's session. And thank you very much everyone for coming. And Manabe-san and Naoshi-san will stay around for a while. If you have any individual questions, please come forward. But let's make the world better. And this is a love letter we can send to the world to our next generation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Jean, for your wonderful moderation. Thank you. Thank you very much.